I was born in Mariupol. I grew up there. I used to love Mariupol. I had a business in Mariupol. I understood that the town was under siege, so nobody was driving out there. But my staff were there, and I just promised them I would come, bring aid, and take them out of there. I just took that decision. Everything is fine. I'm on the road. I hope all will be fine and I will get there. I am worried and nervous, but I'm on the way. I wouldn't say it was difficult, I just didn't know what I would encounter. My friends and I pulled money to buy this bus. We bought the bus, loaded it with provisions and painted it so it would be recognizable. It all went really smoothly and fast. And then when I drove past the last Ukrainian checkpoint in Orekova, I encountered the war. The mines, the burnt out tanks. All the horrors that you see, that's when fear kicked in. I prayed, repented, I had two Bibles here and two here. Nonetheless, the fear was still there. But I drove. Let's go, I'll show you something. I had a business in Mariupol. It was a club, karaoke, lounge bar. Here's another floor. Most of the space was in the basement. It had concrete ceilings. So we transformed it into a bomb shelter. I hadn't measured the strength, but for the moment it was comfortable. It was spacey, there was a grill, so we could cook food and boil water. Hi, how's everyone doing? We're having a blast. We had people on duty, we had scavengers foraging for food, we had people procuring water. Everything was so organized that we could joke that it's a five-star bomb shelter. It's been snowing, and that means we will clean up today. There was a telegram group where I added all my friends and relatives. Since I didn't know if I would ever return, I wrote in it every night, how it was for us here. We also went to the neighboring bomb shelters. We were trying to go anywhere where there were children. If we couldn't drive there, we would bring the aid by foot. There was always fear. You were always afraid that something could land near you. This bullet hit right here. We often took hits, but everything that came at us missed. Something hit here, and here, and here. Run. Down. Damn it! Lucky for us that I parked the car in front of the entrance. It protected us. Did you guys understand where the bomb dropped? Just behind the car. A car drove by that moment. In that car, a grandma died. And her grandson and I dragged her over the road. What's on my face? Blood. A lot? Yes. It's horrific. You have to understand, this is the shelter. I hope the kids will survive. It's terrible. To see them makes me cry. They're so scared, screaming. 
I hope God will save them. It's horrific, just horrific. We try our best. It's terrible. The memories are coming back. The one thing I was most afraid of seeing was a dead child's body. Whenever there were bodies on the street, small piles, I tried to look away. Children are special in my life. I'm a father of four. If I'd seen a dead child's body, I would have broken down. I certainly would have broken down that moment. I wouldn't have been the same after that. After the strike, I looked at the car and said, OK, let's try to fix the car. But I didn't even have to. I sat in the car, turned the key, and the motor started. That's where it hit. That's the brakes. The brakes. After the airstrike, I had no more brakes. But in Mariupol, you didn't need them. You could just speed across the city as you wanted. The only thing I was afraid of was crashing into a tank or a military jeep. We were waiting for an opportunity to leave, any way out that was not completely mined. But at the first opportunity we left, we took children, pregnant women and mothers with children. Look who my passengers are. Wave to the camera. When we left, there were several people, one baby and three children. Me, my sister and a friend who we had met at the shelter. It was terrifying. We passed mines and tanks. There were lots of mannequins, I mean dead people. We told them there were mannequins, but in fact they were dead bodies, right? Right. I sometimes dream about the gunfire. I don't wake up. I always dream until the end. And then I wake up in the morning because I'm afraid. Everybody is still asleep at that time. I haven't told anybody. When I got off the bus in Dnipro, I went into a shop, and subconsciously I was looking for things like batteries, food, medicine, ready to grab anything I could find and run before the next shell hits. And then I understood that I'm in civilization now, and that I have to go and pay for all of it. It was a beautiful city, and it had just begun to bloom. I loved this city so much, I grew up there. I had lots of friends there. It's my hometown. The theatre is the only place from where I didn't take any kids, because conditions were so good. There were rooms that would be shared by three families with kids. I thought it was a place that would not be hit. Everyone understood that it was full of people who were hiding there from the bombs.
What was the motivation of the person who sent the rocket to this building? What did he think at that moment? Why did they do it? They came to liberate us. Liberate us from what? From our life, our home, our loved ones? They came to destroy everything we have. That's what they can do. Nothing else. Bastards. The most difficult time was at night. You'd go from shelter to shelter during the day and collected all these negative impressions. And in the evening, all the pent-up emotions were released. I would hide in a dark corner so nobody would see that Mikhail Andreevich is crying. That's how we fuel up. Another bus has joined us. It's called The Lost One. There are more and more of us. On my first trip, I was the only one. But by my third trip, I would be standing in the queue at the checkpoints for 40 minutes. There were so many people who wanted to help and get people out of there. The only thing that Putin did was show the world who Ukrainians are, what Ukraine is. People have closed ranks. The volunteers have brought thousands out of the city in their own cars. And many did not return. Some drove into a mine. Some got caught in the crossfire while driving at night and so on. Most of them just said, somebody needs to do this, and they went. These are regular Ukrainians, regular people.